I sing because I'm happy And I sing because I am free And I know you are just me. Welcome back to another piano lesson with Warren. Today we're going to take a look at 10 gospel songs you should know for funeral services. Funerals and death is all a part of life. And as a musician, as a gospel pianist, you will find yourself in countless situations where you're being asked to play for a funeral. And oftentimes, sometimes someone from the audience might decide to pull a quick one on you and sing a song that you didn't know they were gonna sing that you weren't prepared for. And so I'm gonna highlight 10 songs today where that are used heavily at funerals. And so if you know these 10, have them memorized, have them in your bag. Chances are when that person come up and decide to feel the spirit and sing a song, they might pull from this list and you will be prepared. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today. 10 funeral songs you should know as a gospel pianist. Stay tuned. The first one is going to be Going Up Yonder by Tremaine Hawkins. This is a popular one. Um, it's been done back in the day a lot with choirs, but a lot of people also continue to sing it solo, especially the older generations. So you wanna definitely know Going Up Yonder. <clears throat> and I think the original key is D flat. I'm not sure, but you should, you know, uh, you could play in any key, but it's good to know it so you can transpose it. Right? If you want to know where I'm going, where I'm going. start to run with it. It's not a very difficult song um, and you don't have to know the lyrics. So when I'm saying you have to, you want to know these songs, you just want to know the chords <laughs> so you can, you know, accompany the singer. I don't, I, I, I kind of vaguely know the lyrics. I'm looking here at my computer screen where I pull up the lyrics just so I can sing a little bit of it for you guys. But most of the songs that I know, 90% of the songs that I know, I couldn't sing you the lyrics from start to end. That's because I mostly just focus on the chords and I learned the lyrics through just over time listening to the song, but I don't generally make the lyrics my perspective or sort of the, the main focus because unless you're the one singing the song, you don't really know the lyrics, but you do need to know the structure of the song and the chords. So that's the first one, the Tremaine Hawkins going up yonder. Number two is You Don't Have to Worry by Kirk Franklin, another older sort of uh, song that's been around for a while. And that's why a lot of people know it. So a lot of these songs that I'm going to be talking about today are songs that were released a while ago, which means they're very popular. A lot of people know them. It's easy to sort of just pull that out of the hat if you're being asked as a singer to sing a song on the spot. And it's also why pianists need to know these. So when they throw them at you, 
Because the last thing you want is to completely bomb a song at someone's funeral, you know? Because these songs also are, 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 these songs help the bereaved family to grieve, you know? It helps to encourage them and, and to motivate them during this time of loss. So a lot of these songs sort of em, embodies, embodies, em, <laughs> embodies this, uh, the, the, this time of grievance and, and give somebody something to look forward to more positive. So you don't have to worry, Kirk Franklin. I'm gonna do this one in also D flat, right? Huh? one that's a good one that's also done at a lot of just other functions outside of funerals just anything that requires motivation encouragement you know I've heard this done at, at, at um, graduations and just all kind of events so this is definitely a good one to have in your bag know the structure know the chords in all 12 keys if possible now this is what we talk about the importance of learning songs via the number system. So you're thinking just numbers. So whatever key the singer is in, you just got to regurgitate those numbers and you're good to go. So that's number two, You Don't Have to Worry by Kirk Franklin. Number three is an old hymn uh, called God Will Take Care of You. This isn't a lot of hymn books, been around for a while. Another powerful funeral song meant to uplift and to encourage the grieving family, right? So you gotta learn this one, grab a hymn book. Um, there are tons of artists singing it online. I like the, the Leandra Johnson version, Leandria Johnson version. A lot of stuff going on there with chords and stuff, but that's a cool one, you can check that out. But let's see, just drop this one in A flat. And then you can make it gospel. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day, all of the way. He will take care.
take care of you through every day, all all the way. God will take care of you. <laughs> ah, that's a nice one. Very old hymn. I actually, I could I have memories of my grandma singing that one. But it's definitely a powerful one, especially in the gospel church. You got to learn this one, right? And like you say, you know, you can sort of gospelize it by using some of them chords, some of them runs, and the rhythm. But, but, um, but what I always do before I start to just decide I'm going to run with runs and chords and all that, I take the cue from the singer. So the way I play the song is going to be determined by how the person who's singing it is singing the song, right? So good one to keep in mind. Song number four is His Eyes or on the sparrow, or is high, is on the sparrow. Um, this song's been around again for a while. The, the, the most famous version is probably the, the, the Lauren Hill version. I actually looked it up on YouTube today, and it had like something like 50 million views. So definitely popular. But every soprano, diva, gospel singer have, has done a version of this song at some point. Um, Jennifer Hudson also did a version of this, and that has a couple million views as well. So it's a very popular song. You can check that out. But His Eyes on the Sparrow is one that is not only done at funerals, but just any event that requires a soloist, that's, that's one of their songs that they like to do. It's a beautiful song. It is tricky to play for a pianist um, if you're not familiar with crazy chord changes, because... The song in itself, the nature of the song, <clears throat> has a lot of chord changes. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart Heaven and all. When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His eye is all. Anyway, <clears throat> that's my attempt of <laughs> singing that song. Definitely not within my key range, but um, I believe the original, at least the ones that I hear. Yeah, the original is uh, F sharp. So I figured uh, let's try it, fake it in F sharp. So that's His Eye is on the Sparrow. Um, Whitney Houston also did a version of this too. So all, like I said, all the top soprano divas. 
Number five, right, is um, he's a, a precious lord. And Mahalia Jackson and a bunch of other singers from back in the day has done this one. You just type in Precious Lord, take my hand, and you'll see a lot of singers do it, right? So Precious Lord. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand, I'm tired. <laughs> so that's sort of a precious lord at least the style i like to play it and if you want to play it in a sort of a gospel style that's sort of the feel you want to shoot for number six is hasten to his throne it's a richard smallwood composition or rearrangement re but that was made famous by whitney houston in the preacher's wife that also is a song that's done with, 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 often done with choir, but there's a solo section that soloists just like to run with. And you know, this song has pretty much become a solo song over the years, but it's another one that you should know. It works well with uh, funerals. So the hasten to his throne sounds like this. It's a very beautiful song, but as you can see, lots going on, chord changes, it's constant, the chords are constantly leaving the key and popping back in, but definitely one you should learn having the bag ready for funerals. Number seven, let's take a look at number seven song that I have here on my list is Stand by Donnie McClurkin. That's a, that's a good one. Um, not too old, probably came out within the last 15 years. Some would consider that old, but that's that's not old. So the Donnie McClurkin stand, I believe it's an A flat. What do you do when you don't know you can man? Yeah. Seems like it's never enough. 
And you know what to say when your friends turn away and you're all alone. What do you give when you give it your all and seem like you can make it through? Well, you just stand and there's nothing left to do. You just stand and let the Lord see you through. When after you done all you can, you just stand. This is a beautiful song. Love it, love it, love it. So that's a good one to learn. It is, again, more choral bass, but it can definitely work as a solo, definitely be sung as a solo. Like I said, if you listen to the lyrical content, you could tell this is definitely meant to uplift someone, to motivate someone, to comfort someone when they're down. And like I said, it might not necessarily be funerals only. There will be a lot of other situations outside of funerals where a song like this will fit nicely. So I would say it is definitely on that top 10 list of songs you should learn. Let's jump now to song, I believe what I have here, number eight. And this one is an old one that a lot of people do. It's the tried and true old Amazing Grace, right? Amazing Grace is probably done more at funerals than any other song in the history, modern history of, you know, music and funerals and stuff like that. So it's definitely one you wanna know. All right? In grace, how sweet the sound that saved the rest like me. So that one you want to know in any key, every key, any style. This is definitely one of the most popular uh, funeral songs there is. And just done in so many circumstances, you know, so many different style of uh, events and stuff like that. Someone's going to pull out the old Amazing Grace. So make sure you learn that one. Now, number nine is uh, I Shall Wear a Crown. Again, big choir song. But a lot of people sing it as solo, and it's kind of tricky too. You know, it doesn't it doesn't mean to just use standard chord triads like that. So you'd want to spend some time and make sure you learn this one so that you can play it. Uh, it's been done in many keys. You know, I think I'm just going to do an E flat here now.
So, and it keeps going like that. It's not a long song in terms of a lot of different structure, but that's I Shall Wear a Crown very popular in uh, funerals, especially if you got a soloist who can sing, you best believe they got this song in their repertoire bag. They're gonna be adding it, so you wanna know it. The last song, song number 10, my top 10 list. Now there's so many songs out there. What I'd love to hear from you guys is comment down below what other funeral songs you think is popular that we should all learn because hey, I'm here to learn, you know? I don't play at funerals that often as you may think. So I wanna know that if there are songs that you think are done more frequently, especially if you're like an usher for a church, which means you attend a lot of funerals, you know, to help with the organization and everything of that. You're probably hearing a lot of songs and you're probably in the, the know more than I am. So I would wanna hear from you guys down below in the comment section, what are some other popular funeral songs or just songs in general that is done in a wider range of events that we should all learn. The last one I have here is By and By. It's an old hymn that people have sort of sped up and do it in the form, especially when like, you know, uh, the church is processional. People are walking out of the church or walking out of the funeral with the casket. This is a nice sort of, sort of up-tempo song to do, you know. Anna? Nice up tempo song. So that's a good one by and by. So those are my top 10 songs that you should know so you can be prepared for funerals. Oftentimes, when you have to kind of play at a funeral, you're most likely given the songs in advance that the pastor wants to sing or maybe a few people from the, the, the person who has passed away, his family might sing some songs. But then you're gonna I'm pretty sure you're gonna have a one or two people in the congregation who say, I wanna say a word on this person, or you know, I wanna a family member come up to speak something about the family, and they may just raise a song. It happens spontaneously, and it happens so frequently. Most of the time, the musicians aren't ready, aren't prepared. And so sometimes the person just sing a cappella. But if you're there and a musician, it'll be nice to be able to accompany that singer. And so these are my top 10 songs that I think every pianist, gospel pianist, should know so you can be prepared for the services, right? So what I'd like to hear from you is down below, comment, let me know what song you think should have made this list. Obviously, 10 songs is not enough. There are so many songs, but I wanna hear what you think. So comment down below a song that you think is a great song that every musician should know for funerals. And lastly, if you like this content, you like this video, you want to see more of this stuff, please give me a like, a subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when we post new content. Little stuff like that really does help the channel to grow. The more we grow, the more we can continue to put out high quality and free content like this. But with that said, if you want to take your gospel playing even further to another level with more structure, more direction, and more guidance, I would highly recommend you to check out PianoLessonWithWarren.com. That's my premium piano lesson membership where I pour my heart and soul. Everything that I've learned over the 20 years that I've been studying music, I lay that out in a nice study path for you 
So whether you're beginner, intermediate, or advanced, there's something there for you. A lot of structure, we do a lot of live events every month, just so much great things over there. I can't say it all in this video, it would become too long. But if you head over there to the URL, pianolismwithwarren.com, you'll see everything we offer in the program and just a lot more about what I do, how I got started in this field and all of that great stuff. All right, so until then, keep listening, keep singing, keep practicing, because this is how you'll continue to grow as a musician. Have a blessed week, talk soon.